Well, last year I had a chance to check out one of my favorite two-in-one convertibles, perhaps of all time. It's from HP and of course it's a Spectre X360, 13 inch model. It checked all the boxes and I couldn't wait to get the refresh here for late 2019 into the studio. There are a couple of new features that make this stand out. Number one, it comes with an OLED display option, which is absolutely gorgeous. And number two, it's running Intel's all new 10th generation Ice Lake processor. Now I have the Core i7. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my review of the all new HP Spectre X360 13T, all new for late 2019. Coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button? I know a lot of you are not getting notified when I'm uploading new videos. I'm not sure what's going on with YouTube. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Hopefully you will be notified every time I post a new video. Now, because YouTube is unreliable, I would also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll let you know when I post a new video on those platforms as well. Now, in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is seeing this video before its release. And with that out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now, you'll get a full leather sleeve. I love the fact they include this at this price point. Very nice. It's good to carry it around town. And of course, inside is that premium packaging we've come to expect with the Spectre line. This is no exception. Now, lifting the lid for the first time, you're holding the unit. And I have to say, very impressive. Again, very similar in terms of the design and look from last year's gem cut design. We'll get into that in just a little bit. Now, you do get some documentation as well as some warranty information and a pretty compact 65 watt power adapter, which uses USB-C. I like that. And I like the fact that the cord is braided, less likely to snag or break. That's pretty good as well. And they also give you the extension cord and they give you the HP pen at no additional cost and it's powered by one quadruple A battery. And once again, they went with the gem cut design. Now, I actually really like the gem cut design. I think not only does it look good, but it also is pretty functional. They put the power button and another USB-C port out of the way. This way, you're not going to accidentally hit the power button and the power cord is not in your way. I like that. Now, there are three color options, natural silver, Poseidon blue, which I took a look at last year, and nightfall black. Now, nightfall black is a rebranding, I think, or renaming of ash silver, which I've seen in the past, which I've used in the past. It actually looks really good. I don't know what's so black about it, but whatever. Let's go with what they did. And as we always do, let's check out the port selection. Now, as far as ports are concerned, let's start off on the left side. In the corner is a power button with an LED indicator light letting you know it's powered on, a 3.5 millimeter headset jack, and a USB-A 3.1 Gen 1. On the right side is a micro SD card reader for storage expansion, the HP Privacy Kill Switch, which allows you to turn off your webcam. I like that. Two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and yes, they do support four lanes. And I like the fact that that second Thunderbolt 3 port is in the corner out of the way. Okay, let's talk about the display, one of my favorite parts of this convertible laptop. Now, what you're looking at is an OLED display. That means you're going to get really deep black, some really vibrant colors. It has 4K or UHD resolution. That's 3840 by 2160. But keep in mind, this is a 13.3 inch display. That means you're going to get a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. I kind of prefer the 3 to 2 aspect ratio, but again, 16 to 9 is excellent for consuming media, especially HDR content that really shines on this device. It really comes out nice on this, especially when you're watching Netflix and YouTube. Now, you've also got some really slim bezels, and of course, you get that really good brightness on this. Now, this measured 400 nits in terms of brightness, making this an excellent choice for both indoor and outdoor use. And at 100% sRGB and 98% Adobe RGB, this is a great choice for the creative professional that does Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. And I love the fact they were able to shrink the bezels over last year's model, giving you a 90% screen to body ratio, giving you some great looks here. Love it paired with that OLED display. This is simply stunning. And despite the micro bezels, they were able to put an infrared camera on the top. And that's a pretty impressive engineering feat, allowing you to log in with Windows Hello via face recognition. That's pretty good. And I love the fact they put a kill switch allowing you to turn off the webcam, giving you more privacy and security. 
In addition to the infrared camera, you also get a fingerprint scanner, allowing you to log in with Windows Hello. Setup was easy and registered my finger pretty much every time I used it. They did a good job on it. Now this, of course, being a convertible laptop, this allows you to go into the different modes. You can put it into tent mode, great for consuming media. Same goes for stand mode, watching Netflix, YouTube, really excellent. And of course, you could put it into the tablet mode, great for use with the pen. Now the pen itself has got 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. You could also opt to get the HP Tilt Pen for additional cost on that, which you might want to do if you're a digital artist. That might be something to consider. Although I think this pen did a really good job for taking notes and sketching out artwork here and there. It did a good job. And it uses the Entrig pen technology. That's the same as a Surface pen, so you can interchange the two. That's always good as well. Now, when it comes to the keyboard, I'm actually impressed. I think they did a good job here. Nicely spaced out. I like the way the keyboard stretches out to the sides, although you will notice that the page up, page down buttons and those buttons are on the side in a row. Some people may not like that. But as far as the tactile feedback, as far as the key travel, I thought it was also pretty good. I was actually impressed with this keyboard. They did a good job. And I love the fact they give you a multi-stage backlight. The keys light up really bright and it allows you to get work done, of course, in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. And hats off to HP for going with precision touchpad here. Really responsive, really worked well. Two finger scrolling was buttery smooth and all the Windows 10 gestures worked as advertised. Now, one interesting change from last year's model is they did away with the quad speakers and decided to go with dual speakers only, and they did away with that speaker grill on the top above the keyboard, presumably because this has smaller bezels and they wanted to stretch the keyboard out. And the sound is actually pretty good despite not having quad speakers at this time around. They sounded really good, pretty loud, and they had a hint of bass to them, so really not bad in that regard. The 3.5 millimeter headset jack worked well, no static, no interference, and the Bluetooth headphones worked well thanks to the Bluetooth 5.0 that this device has. Now you can get it with Wi-Fi 6 and optional gigabit LTE. I don't have LTE on my model, but that's something you might want to consider. Now, as far as upgradability is concerned, not really good news here. Now, in order to get inside this laptop, what you need to do is remove the rubber strip on the top, as you see here. There are three Phillips head screws underneath that. Remove those. Remove the two Torx screws on the bottom. There are T5 Torx screws. And once you do that, you can pop off the bottom plate. Now, once inside, you'll notice that the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade that. And as far as the SSD, I couldn't remove this metal plate. I'm pretty sure this is soldered in. I'm not 100% sure, but I didn't want to risk breaking anything or ruining anything. So uh, let's leave it at that. But I think it's pretty much soldered in. Now, as far as the reads and writes, you get some very good reads and writes with the SSD. They do include, as you can see from these numbers. Now, as far as the Wi-Fi card, that's soldered in as well. So not much upgradability. Now, as far as the battery is concerned, you're looking at a 60 watt hour battery. And here's how it did on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. Now it did seven hours and two minutes, which is very good for a 4K OLED display. Now the XPS 13 two-in-one that I looked at had the full HD display, IPS display. So keep that in mind. That's why you're seeing better battery life on that. Now, if you do need to plug in, they do supply you with a very compact 65 watt power adapter that will give you a full charge in less than two hours, which is very good. Now, when it comes to performance, the HP Spectre X360 did really well. Now, the PC Mark 10, which is a good indicator of everyday use, did very well, as well as the Geekbench 4, multi-core, single-core scores, the OpenCL test, everything you would expect with a 10th generation Ice Lake processor that this does have. Cinebench R15 test also did very well. So performance actually was really good on this thin and light convertible. Now, when it comes to gaming, of course, this is not a gaming laptop. You're not going to be playing any of the AAA titles on their highest settings. It's just not what this laptop's made to do. Having said that, you can play some of the older titles if you lower the settings, and you will get some playable frame rates. Now, as far as the graphics itself is concerned, there's no dedicated GPU option, although you do get Iris Plus graphics on this, which is actually a step up from last year's built-in graphics. Now, if you do want to connect to an external GPU, that is definitely an option. That's due to the two Thunderbolt 3 ports that this does support, and they do support four lanes, so there's no bottleneck in that regard. However, if you do decide to go with the external GPU, that will definitely add to the cost of this laptop, so keep that in mind. 
Now, there are two fans, and they will kick in under heavy load. That's typical, although they're not very loud, and they're not too annoying, so that's good. Now, as far as the thermals itself are concerned, it did pretty well, considering this is such a thin and light laptop. Not overly hot. Pretty good temperatures when I streamed my 15-minute video. That's a test I used to determine how hot this will get. Now, if you really do push it under heavy load, you will notice some thermal throttling, but that's typical for any thin and light laptop. This is no exception. Okay, let's wrap it all up. Can I recommend the all-new HP Spectre X360 13T, all-new for late 2019? Answer is absolutely one of my favorite two-in-1 convertibles, perhaps of all time. Definitely on par with the Dell XPS 13 two-in-1. I think they're pretty much neck and neck with this getting a bit of a nod. Now, let me tell you why. I love its stunning bright OLED touch display. Now, I didn't get a chance to use the OLED version of the XPS 13, so I really can't comment, but this OLED display is simply stunning. It's got some strong performance out of that 10th generation Ice Lake processor. You got that thin and light design with that gem cut design. I actually like it. It's functional as well. I like the fact they include the pen at no additional cost. It also comes with a precision touchpad, a very good decision in my opinion that HP went with this time around. Now there are a few negatives to be aware of. Of course, there's no place to store the pen on the device itself. It's not really upgradable and there's no longer quad speakers on this. You get dual speakers, although they did sound pretty good. But there are no deal breakers by any stretch, ladies and gentlemen. This is an excellent two-in-one choice. I'm going to give it a score of 91%, making the all-new HP Spectre X360 13-inch worth your money. What do you think about this bad boy, the all new Spectre X360 13T? I absolutely love it. One of the things you're gonna love about it, of course, is that 13.3 inch OLED display, and boy, is it good. It gets bright, it's crisp, it's sharp, deep blacks, very vibrant colors, everything you'd expect from an OLED display. It doesn't disappoint. I love the fact that it's running the 10th generation Intel Ice Lake processor. Performance was very good. Uh, thermals were decent for a thin and light 13 inch laptop. Battery life was surprisingly good for an OLED panel. Now, if you're gonna compare it to an IPS 1080p display, of course, it's not gonna do quite as well. Now, you can get this in a 1080p variant, but I would recommend if you can spend the extra money, get that OLED, it's just simply gorgeous. And you do get about seven hours, you employ some battery saving techniques, you will get some pretty decent battery life even with that OLED display. Not only does this look good, but it's also functional as well. This gem cut design puts the power button in the corner as well as another fundable three port. So the wires are out of the way. You won't accidentally hit this power button. I think that's a good engineering and I like the way this comes together. Now I have the Nightfall Black, which I think was also called a dark hat silver from last year. I don't see any difference, but I think it's just a rebranding or renaming of the color. Now I checked out the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1. I, I really like that one as well. I'm curious Here's a C what Lenovo has to offer with the C940, which I hopefully will be getting into the studio very soon so we can get all three and compare them. But this is a really excellent choice. The Spectre X360 is leading the way once again. I think this is favorable when you're looking at it with the Dell XPS 13. The port selection, everything I think is a little bit better. Again, these are not upgradable. They're thin and light 13 inch laptops. The XPS 13 is not upgradable as well. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. I have no hesitation recommending this. This is an excellent choice for a two-in-one convertible. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the all-new A- Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Dell- This is HP. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the No- What the hell's the name of this product? I keep forgetting.